One great way to breathe new life into an aging MacBook Pro is to upgrade its hard drive. When I upgraded my old MacBook Pro's 80 gigabyte 5200 RPM hard drive to a 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, not only did I get a ton more space, but it ran noticeably faster. And that gave me two more years with that computer that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the hard drive in a non-unibody MacBook Pro. There were several iterations of the MacBook Pro between 2006 and 2008, so while this video is a great overview of the process, you'll still want to look up the step-by-step -step instructions for your specific model of computer on our site before you get started. If you need to know where your model number is, go ahead and flip your computer over and take a look at the underside. If it's rubbed off, that's okay. You can head to the ID or Mac page on our site and look it up that way. Before I dig in, I'm going to get all of my parts and tools together, which really isn't all that much. All I'm going to need is a spudger, a Phillips 00 screwdriver, a T6 Torx driver, both of which I got from our 26-piece bit driver kit, and of course, my replacement hard drive. I'm going to use a 750 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. I'm also going to have a screw tray handy, which you probably know is my very favorite thing, because even though it's an easy repair, there are lots of screws of varying sizes involved, and I want to make sure to keep them all organized. Now that I've got all of my parts and tools together, I can get started by flipping the computer over and removing the battery. Once the battery's out, we're going to get to work on removing the top case. And in order to do that, we have to remove the memory cover. Once the memory cover's out, we'll be able to see all the screws on the bottom that we have to take out in order to get the top case off. With the last of the bottom screws removed, I can get started removing the ones along the sides. You really want to make sure to consult the repair guide at this point because they tend to blend in and you want to make sure you remove all the necessary screws before you start pulling the case off. Now that all the screws are on the perimeter are removed, the next step is to take off the top case. So you're going to flip the computer over and open it up and begin to pry the top case off near the screen of the computer, rotating it back towards the front of the computer. When you get to the front, there's going to be some latches that you need to release, and that's when the spudger comes in handy. Okay. When you get that last clip released, don't go pulling the whole thing off just yet because it's still attached to the logic board via a ribbon cable. So what you want to do is lift it up gently and disconnect that ribbon cable with your spudger. And with that cable disconnected, this whole piece should just come right off. And the majority of the repair is done. Uh, at this point, we can actually see the hard drive right here, and it is attached to the logic board with a cable and a bracket. First thing we're going to do is detach the cable. And I'm just going to use my spudger and kind of slide it underneath and rotate it up until it pops off. Not that hard. The cable is adhered to the hard drive with some adhesive. So I'm going to use my spudger again and kind of go along the underside of the cable and gently pry it up and away from the hard drive. Now we can take care of the bracket, which is kind of hard to see. It's, it's wedged down in here between the hard drive and the case. It's held in place with a couple of screws, but before we can get to those screws, I've got to remove this Bluetooth board. This is a Core Duo model, so the Bluetooth board is kind of wedged in here. On the Core 2 Duo models and later, you won't see this Bluetooth board in here, so don't be surprised if it's not there. To remove it, I'm just going to use the pointy end of my spudger and just kind of pry it up and away. Shouldn't be that difficult. And once it's out, I can go ahead and take out the screws for the bracket. With those screws out, the whole hard drive should come out pretty easily. And the very last thing that I have to do is transfer the bracket, the bumpers, and the screws to my new hard drive. So I'll go ahead and take those off now. 
Once I transfer the bracket, bumpers, and screws to my new hard drive, all I've got to do is install it and reassemble my computer. One question we get frequently is how do I transfer my data from my old hard drive to my new hard drive? If you're wondering about that, I would recommend checking out our hard drive upgrade kit. It comes with a 750 gigabyte hard drive, all the tools you need to complete the swap, and an external enclosure to transfer the data from the old hard drive to the new hard drive. If all of that sounds intimidating, we made a video for you that will walk you through the process and we will link to it right here. Of course, you can find all the parts and tools for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com. And if you run into any problems during your repairs, there are lots of solutions in the MacBook Pro Repair Guide on our site. For all the latest teardowns and repair videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash ifixit. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.